Hey everybody, so that clip you just saw was shot with this, the Insta360 Nano S. So the Nano S is, I believe, the second generation of the Nano series. It's a very portable uh, 360 VR camera for iPhones. Um, the brand is Insta360 and they're based in Shenzhen. I mean, everything is made in Shenzhen, China nowadays. Like, everything comes from China. So, um... This is a VR camera that I can shoot in 4K resolution at a resolution of 6272 by 3136. So you saw the clip earlier. Um, you might have noticed that um, it was pretty cool. Like it kept changing, it kept changing uh, perspective. That's because um, Insta360 developed a shooting mode called th Free Capture, which is pretty awesome. I gotta admit, it basically lets you shoot a shoot a 360 degree video and then you shoot a 360 video first and then afterwards you can go into the app and then adjust the perspective you want and turn it into a flat 2d video with like you know um different perspectives so it's almost like you can direct your own movie afterwards so you can shoot a video without caring for am i focusing on this person or that and then do all that later So, okay. Okay, that's cool. The packaging is also a VR camera, like a Google um, cardboard type of camera. I should not put away the knife so early. Wow, okay, I'm liking this packaging a lot. Like, I like it when companies come up with clever design. I like that this box that holds the camera is also the VR camera, or VR goggles, I mean. So what is this? This is a, a stand, I guess, for the camera or for your phone. So I've tested a couple of Insta360 products before. Um, the last one I tested that was that's also on this channel is the Insta360 One. That's like a more um, standalone camera that can be plugged into an iPhone or used as a standalone. Whereas this, I believe, you need to plug into an iPhone to have it working. So this is a a stand. Yes, you can use this for smartphones too, probably. Pretty nice. Oh no, you can use this alone. It's awesome alone or your phone. Okay, apologies about that. So you can use this camera as a standalone. So here it is. You see how small this camera is? There's a little bit of heft to it though. Like it's it feels firm. It's not like kind of hollow inside. This is the best package you can get from Insta360. I'm liking this a lot. So you get a little bag to store your camera. So that's awesome that you can use the camera without needing your iPhone on you at all times because you probably already know if you watch my videos. I don't prefer using an iPhone as my daily driver. I'm an Android guy. So I have an iPhone 10, but this phone just sits at home. What I bring out and about every day is my Huawei Mate 10 Pro or a Samsung Galaxy S8 or the LG V30 sometimes. Okay, so you have here a USB cable. Wish it was USB-C, but it is what it is. Okay, so that's it for the packaging. So make sure you keep this box because this you will use this later to watch VR videos. So I believe you have to download an app. So let me grab my iPhone 10. So I think you just plug it into... Oh, crap. I might have trouble plugging this in because I have something on the back of this phone. Like I have... First, I have a sheet of glass over the phone as protection, and then I have this for grip. The reason I have it for the iPhone 10, you know why? It's because the, iPhone, 
because iPhone software it's so not one hand friendly. I hate it. Like if I want, like for example, all the icons have to sit on the top. So when I'm using it from one hand, it's hard for me to reach the icons at the top. When I use Android phones, I put all the icons at the bottom precisely for this reason because so I can walk around with one hand and I can reach everything easily because it's at the bottom. But with the iPhone 10, you can't do that because Apple forces you to put all your apps up top. So I have to. Let me turn off this damn light. It's getting on my nerves. Okay, so on the iPhone 10 or any iPhone, Apple forces the app at the top, so I can't reach it up at the top unless I do reachability to do this. And it's a little bit awkward. So this is the biggest reason why I'm not using the iPhone. I, I don't like this lack of one-hand usability. Look at how much easier it is for me to use a phone one hand on an Android. Everything's at the bottom. If I want, I can bring down a one-hand one mode that I can reach everything like this. But on this, like, control panel, it's up here. Tough to reach unless I do reachability. And reachability, see, it's it doesn't work all the time. It's tough. Anyway, I'm ranting, sorry. So this is why I have this grip. Because this is a grip that you can stick your finger in. I got this on Amazon, too. It's called No Biggie. So after you do this, then you can use the phone one-handed easier. You can walk around and be like, oh, I need to reach the top app. Let me just do this. And then I feel more secure because when I'm doing that, I have my finger on the grip. So then I'm not at risk of dropping the phone. Because if you, if I do this without having a grip, I'm holding the phone like this and I'm trying to reach up top. And if someone bumps into me, the phone flies out of my hand. So this grip, it's I need it for iPhone, but I don't need it for Android because Android has a better software for you to use one-handed. So now with this grip, then I can reach these spots a lot easier and more securely. Anyway, I went on a complete tangent. Sorry about that. So back on this, can I plug this in? Yeah, it's, it's not going to fit because I have this in the glass. I might have to take it off. So that's... A complaint I would have of this. Ensign 360 should have made should have made this um lightning 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 plug like um how do I say adjustable? Do you know what I mean? Like, like right now it's forced in this direction, right? You Insta 360 should have made the plug able to tilt out a little bit more because I can't be the only person with this problem. A lot of people like to use a case on the iPhone 10. So you look at this. You can only plug this in if your phone is naked. Even if you have a case, it's not going to be able to get in. So right now, see, I mean, I can force it in, but I'm at risk of breaking the damn camera. So now what am I going to do? It's a dilemma. I have to either take off this thing, and I might have to take off this glass too. I'm not sure if it will fit even with the glass. Like, I'm going to take off the protection from my phone just to use this camera. Or other people with a case, they're going to have to take off a case just to use this camera. Like, what is good? Come on. Okay, so I forced it in and it appears to be working. Yeah, it is picking up. Yeah, so it did pick up the camera and it's asking me to go download the app. But this is scary. I mean, look at look at this for now. It looks like if I move the phone anymore, it, it'll break the lightning plug off of this phone. This is um, kind of scary. It's because of that grip. I guess if I take off that grip, it'll be fine. But... This is a poor design right here. Like you should you should make the plug adjustable. Okay, so I'm gonna just play over it like this right now because I don't wanna take off that, that grip. Alright, uh, okay, whatever. Just for the sake of this video, I'll take off this grip. The thing is you take it off and then you put it back on later, it's not gonna be as sticky. Like I don't wanna lose the grip just to do this damn review, but I guess these are cheap enough. These are like six ninety nine on Amazon. I still have a sheet of glass over the phone, so um, yeah. Now my phone's very naked. Okay, it it's still a little bit tight to be honest, because uh, I have a sheet of glass over it. So that's crazy. So this camera really can only plug into your iPhone ten if you have. Nothing on on your phone. No case, no nothing. That's that's crazy.
Okay, so it's pretty simple. Once you plug in a camera, it takes you to the app store and then you just have to activate. From here, it should be working already. Yep. So right now you see the camera's working already. So you have to flip it upside down to use the camera. Let's test out one picture really quick. Oh, that's taking really long to save. That took like five seconds. Maybe because... Okay, so... It's... That took kind of long. Maybe because this is... I just plugged in for the first time. Maybe it, it, will, it will be a lot faster later. So photo quality looks pretty good. But anyway, I'm going to play with this a little bit more and I'll be back. Alright, I'm back. So I played with this for like an hour. Pretty cool. Other than the um, kind of crucial design flaw, which I'll get into again later. So first of all, you can use this Insta360 Nano S as a standalone camera. This is a power button that also doubles as a shutter button. So when you turn it on, you just have to press it once to take a photo, double click it to start recording video. You do need the SD card in there if you want to use it as, as a standalone. If you plug it into your iPhone, then you don't need an SD card because whatever you record will go straight into the phone storage. So it's probably better to use it with a phone because you get to um, use the entire screen as a viewfinder too for the, your 360 surroundings. So it's pretty cool. So let's talk um, hardware really quick. So pretty well built device. You have two fisheye 20 megapixel lens right here that shoots at a pretty damn high resolution of 6272 by 3136. So this is capable of recording videos in 4K resolution. And for pictures, it's 20 megapixel stills. Now, 4K is really, really dense for phones and TV. But for VR, it's, it's, it's pretty good, but not great. Ideally, for VR, if you want like a true, clear um, VR experience, you probably need 8K. So 4K, but it's, it's, it's okay. It's good for a consumer entry level device. This thing sells for 240 US. So definitely on a cheaper end of VR cameras like the Samsung Gear 360 sells for 240. GoPro's VR camera sells for like 600 bucks. So this is a pretty good price. So that's about it in terms of hardware. Pretty bare bones. You have a mic up top, a USB port to charge the device, SD card slot, and then you have one of these holes is it's the reset pin. So you can stick a pin in there to force a hard reset. So as mentioned earlier, during the unboxing, this um, slight flaw in the design in that this lightning plug doesn't move. It would be better if you can make it more flexible. Like on the Samsung Gear VR camera, I don't know if, if you have one, the USB-C port that plugs into phones actually moves in and out. So that would make it a lot more flexible. As it is now, it's hard to use this with an iPhone that has a, a case in it. It might be impossible to use it with a case. You might have to take off the case every time. But if, what if you're like me? I don't have a case on there. Instead, I have a piece of glass stuck on the back and an extra grip on top. That makes it very tough to fit. I did manage to get it to work, actually. It did fit in there, but it just it looks so scary. It looks like I'm going to break this thing off any any second if I, if I move it a little bit more so see it doesn't go in straight so I have to force it in there which is probably not ideal look at this fit this fit is awkward but it does work so if you have a case on your iPhone you have to take off the case every single time you use it if you don't have a case if you have one of these things on the back like me you just have to deal with um, a design like this but once you plug it in pretty awesome the entire viewfinder. Okay, well, what is happening now? Let me try to restart it. So this is um, this camera is so new that um, the app is in beta stage right now. So it's a little bit buggy, but I got it to work earlier without problems. So we'll check it out right now and see if a restart, a reset, will get it to work. Yep. So you just have to reset the phone, uh, reset the app every now and then. So now you have an entire viewfinder and you can move around to check what's around you. And it's pretty cool. Um, you have a shutter button for photos, video, 
live so this is to broadcast live 360 videos a feature i'll never use really but my favorite part is right here you have filters so i showed you earlier in that very first video clip at the beginning of this uh, video but you see that you can choose different filters i really like the sketch filters it looks really cool particularly when i'm shooting out in the streets in hong kong so that's probably my favorite feature and then once you record something let me i can unplug this now because i recorded a bunch of clips earlier already okay once you record a clip you are able to pan around zoom do any of this and then you can also hit a button here to adjust filters after you've recorded so that's cool conversely one of the cool th another good features i love it's you can switch perspectives so you can go into right now it's a uh, little planet And you can also, there's a button here, this is a new feature. So you can switch it so you can uh, have multi-view. So this is probably, uh, this is pretty cool and pretty useful. So right now you have a main video right here, but you also have two more perspectives. So that means, say imagine if you are um, in a wedding, in a wedding or, or like, you know, at a party. So it's pretty cool to be able to get one main view of everybody. And you can also right here zoom in to like the bride, right here zoom in on the groom, or zoom in on the on the jealous ex-boyfriend who didn't get picked to marry or some shit. So, so you can do different styles. So you have right here it's circular, and then you have the view out on the side. A lot of stuff to play with, but the best feature is free capture. Free capture is basically. It's tough to show on camera because I have to move the phone around, but it basically allows you to, I explained this earlier, you can shoot a, a 360 video and then you can turn this into a flat 2D video with um, different perspectives that you choose. So I'm going to show you really quick. So you have to hit the button to record and then you can zoom in and out see, see fit and you can also move the phone around to pick the angle. So it's hard to do this under camera right now, so I'm going to take it off camera and do it a little bit. Okay, so I just... Um, so now this is basically a, a normal 2D video that I can share on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, and it'll look like this. So I get to decide which part of the video. This is useful because I get to shoot first and then focus later. So I can shoot this video right here. And then later, if I want to decide, okay, I want to focus on this bag here. And then follow this guy on, on a bicycle. I can do that. So um, let me show you a better example I already cut earlier. And I and I did this with, um, with let me show you. Actually, because this feature is not new, the Insta360 One, which is the older camera, can also do it. So I've been using that a lot when I play music with my, with my friends. It's, it's really awesome, actually. So here you go, this is my Instagram account. So I shot this with... I shot this, not with this camera here, but with the older one, the Insta360 one. So notice that right now, the camera's panning around. This is all shot with a VR uh, 360 camera. I cut this clip myself later with free capture, see? So I'm on the drums, that's me right there. So that's what, so now I'm going to bring it back in and I'm doing all this on the phone. Okay, so that's basically what free capture allows you to do. So here's another free capture clip using the sketch filter. So this is a, again, it's a 2D video. I can share this on Instagram right now if I want. And it's, you get to see different perspectives of the city. So it's pretty cool. So now, um, as mentioned earlier, the design flaw doesn't go in all the way. Also the same with the box. So this is the VR goggles. This is where you put the phone in. But again, look at it. It's so thin. You can only fit an iPhone in there if you have no case or no nothing. So right now I have trouble fitting my iPhone 10 into the goggles because I have a sheet of glass on there. Even, it's not, 
even ignoring this thing, even without this thing, just the sheet of glass is making it tough to fit already. I mean, look at look at this it's already stretching it out. But I'm gonna force it in there because I did it earlier. So once you force it in there, it looks like this. You are still able to watch. Oh shit! I have to do, take it out. You are able to use the goggles properly to watch it in in like a VR format. Good, good. So we'll pick this, 17 seconds. Right here, you have to turn on VR. So you have to go to app, turn on VR. And after that, you just have to plug into this box. Or you can use any other VR headset. So so that's the good news is that you don't have to use, up, use this uh, tight box. But it does work, provided you don't have a case on your phone. So right now you can... Um, See, I put up to my, my eyes right now and I am seeing it fine. I can't show you in the video, but it's fine. Video quality is pretty solid. On par with the with the VR stuff out there right now. So, you know, um, you know, if you're a dude, you know your Pornhub will have some. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's it. This is the Insta360 Nano S. It's 240 bucks, which is a pretty, pretty good price. But I think I prefer the Insta360 One better. Let me grab it really quick. So this is the Insta 361. It's like a hundred bucks more, but it's a little bit. Uh, it has more features. You can shoot bullet time videos with this, and it's a better standalone camera. It's easy to hold, and the best part is it fits on your iPhone a hell of a lot better. I can plug this in like this without worrying that oh crap, am I gonna break the lightning plug because it fits like this. So I kind of wish they went with a different design because this is a hard fit, man. But um, if you but you know, that's a problem that I have because I have something on my phone that I can't take off. If you're using a case that can come off easily, then I guess it's not a big deal. So um, that's it for now. Thank you for watching.